Hey, yeah, uh, long time no see. What's up? Um, back, we're back today, and we'll see if we'll be back some more in the future, time permitting. Um, we got two, it's a double deck day, two shiny silver boxes sitting in front of us. Um, kind of odd bedfellows, but um, I think they'll be kind of fun to quasi compare to each other. They're both around a thousand bucks. They both feature um, digital to audio conversion technologies that are not your classic off the shelf uh, Delta Sigma chipset, so that's always music to my ears. Um, we're looking at the Topping D90 Discrete. It's a one bit a fully discrete deck. And then the um, Dinafrips Aries, and this is the 15th. I did the um, uh, Dinafrip Aries 2 a while back. They had the 12th in between, I did not try that. And here's the 15th, and I'm excited to talk about that. So, like I said, they're kind of in and around a thousand bucks. And um, very different from a feature standpoint. The the topping here has a bunch of extra stuff, uh, notably like Bluetooth, uh, volume control. It's got some uh, EQ and a bunch of settings you can get into in the menus. Um, that sort of a deal. Whereas the the Aries is pretty bare boned in terms of those features. You got um, non oversampling mode. You got phase, but otherwise it it's kind of sounds sounds like how it sounds out of the box. Okay, let's start. Let's start with this guy. So, uh, D90 discrete, like I said, one bit fully discrete with a PSRM module to help stabilize voltage. I'm not going to go too techno nerdy. One, because I have to understand this stuff, and two, because there's probably much better sources. But my understanding is when you're converting at a bit, you will bring a lot of... you bring down the risk of distortion, but then you have to do such fast switching that you can reintroduce distortion. So that's kind of the the idea behind this module that stabilizes the voltage and makes that switching really um, fast and, and of consistency or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> what do I hear in this thing when I listen to it? Well, it is, it's clean. It has a sort of precise sound to it, but um, it doesn't have a lot of that sort of fatigue that I equate with um, not super well uh, designed Delta Sigma uh, DAC architectures uh, where you get um, overly pronounced edge detail. You get sort of like a sort of an attempt to prove to you that it has clarity uh, as opposed to just actually having clarity. Um, so I don't get that with this. I, I, what I hear is, like I said, clarity and focus. Uh, the sound was pretty much right in front of your head in headphones and sort of presented somewhat centered uh, on speakers. Um, it, it was almost like somebody had kind of turn down the reverb, the naturally occurring reverb in the recording studio. So you, you have almost like a, a, a purity that seems sort of maybe beyond even what was recorded. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, not the most expansive soundstage, um, but it's, it's composed, it's detailed. Uh, I thought it worked very well with um, sort of uh, warmer and more fluid chains. So going down to the Decor Taboo and, and having that nice sort of warm fluid tube sound plus the sort of precision that this brought was a was a really nice pairing uh, going balanced into a more analytical sounding amplifier less successful to my ears. All right, shifting gears. The Nindifrips 15th. So it's, you know, Nindifrips is known for their R2R uh, architectures and this the big claim to fame with this one I guess are much updated clocking and uh, power regulation and also the build is just much nicer it's these big chunky pieces of aluminum all around instead of like a folded sheet metal enclosure so it's just a nicer object um, but the internals have been apparently quite quite updated as well uh, MSRP is like 1200 but you can find them cheaper than that um, yeah so no remote included with this one. You do get a remote with that guy out of the box. You can buy a remote for that. So that's one of the new party tricks. You can see it's a little spot to receive IR here. Um, so I really liked the Aries back when I tried it. It really got me on the R2R train. And since then, I've listened to lots of DACs in that space. And my reference is actually, actually based on a Burr Brown, which is kind of an even antiquated um, R2R chip. So it's a sound that I'm comfortable with and I like, and I've listened to lots of things in between, lots of offerings from Cord and other manufacturers. And so I do come back to this sound because it, it does um, present very organically and naturally to me compared to other technologies. Compared to my memory of this, um, 
it's gotten a bit edgier. It's gotten a bit sharper. It's gotten a lot more definition in the top end, which it, it really did lack. And I think one of the reasons I sort of went away from it originally was that it felt a bit soft and squishy. Uh, even though I liked it, even though it was smooth and fluid and, and not lacking detail, it just felt a bit, a bit soft. This deck does not feel that way, almost to a fault. I find that the top end clarity has a little bit of a papery quality for me. It's, it's a little bit flat and not super three-dimensional in that range. Um, it was very acute when I plugged this thing in. I got this this thing I was the original owner of and so heard it from day one. Right when I plugged it in, it was like very noticeable to me. I did let it burn in and did not listen to it, to not like try to reprogram my brain for uh, a couple of weeks and then went back to it and I was like, oh, that's not, it's not as, as sort of intense as what I remembered. So I don't know, it could have been my mood. <laughs> could have been that it really did burn in a bit. Um, but it was still there, and, and I and I do notice that with this deck that it is um, <clears throat> it it it's it's maybe like a, a slight over course correction in my mind from where uh, the uh, the Aries was, and I don't know what the twelfth was. Maybe the twelfth's the uh, the the Cinderella here, the not the Cinderella, the Goldilocks, <laughs> the fairy tale, the one right in the middle. That's kind of perfect. I don't know, worth trying. Um, but anyway, I I do like it a lot, I, and I and I and I. You get a lot of great detail. You get a lot of that R to R quality. Um, there's a lot of weight to the base, a lot of texture to the base. It's really satisfying. Um, so I guess if I was like to compare these, and like I said, I, I don't know how many people would really be like A being these, but I did. Um, <clears throat> I would say the, the Aries, like I said, can sound a little papery on the high end. Um, and in some ways the D90 feels like a little bit more natural in the upper register on mid-range um, tracks like No Faith by um, Raul uh, Vignal, probably ruining that name. Um, the Aries um, has some uh, whisper and a more natural extension in the vocals that like, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's what I like, uh, but a little bit softer and thinner. And then the D90, it feels more exposed, more honest, like like I'm sitting there and the person isn't mic'd and they're just sort of like singing to me. So there's a sort of n naturalness and, and, and clarity in, in vocals. I will say the higher register the vocal, the more I like them on the D90 discrete and the lower register the vocal, the more I like them on the Aries. And that brings me to the lower end and the bass. And the Aries just delivers a lot more gravitas and depth in this territory um, and more slap. It's just more fun and bigger and deeper and the d90 does go deep but that 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 lower register just doesn't like i said doesn't have that snap it doesn't have as much detail in it and it, it just doesn't feel as sort of authentic um so really conclusion song by song which my preference was i was totally shocked i don't think i've been excited about a topping deck in a long time um but I was, I was really pleasantly surprised by this. Um, and it was fun to come back to an old friend. And I think this is a great DAC, uh, you know, at, at this price point. If you're looking for R to R and you want something that's got a little more, a little more edge definition, a little more detail. Um, the D90 is, is sort of in my mind, like maybe what happened, like it's very, it feels very honest in its presentation. And then maybe at times the, the Aries is more what I want it to be. <laughs> A little dreamier, a little more organic, uh, a little more bass, a little more room atmosphere. Um, but they both have their charms. And so I don't think there's a wrong answer here. It kind of depends in many ways what your chain looks like or what your chain sounds like. If you have a chain <clears throat> that is um, kind of more fluid, um, maybe tube oriented, maybe you have headphones that have a, have a, have a fuller, um, you know, sort of mid region, mid bass region then something like the discrete's really nice because you're going to get this like little detail pump up that's really, really fun. Uh, if your system is already sort of on the um, clean and crisp side, then, you know, R to R really adds something nice. You just got to recognize that you're going to live with this little bit of top end, um, you know, snippiness that um, you might live, you know, like that's the thing. The whole thing's subjective. Maybe when I describe that, you're like, yes, that's what I want. That's what I hated about the previous Aries. So. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Sign craft, sign craft.